Hey guys, welcome to another video. Arlisha here. Today I have a watercolor review for you, and we're going to be talking about the core watercolors. You guys may have heard me mention this particular brand of watercolors in a couple recent videos, as I have been trying them out since I got them, and I think I'm finally ready to talk to you guys about them. You'll notice that I have tubes here instead of paints in pans, and I'm actually going to be using these paints right out of their tubes. So before we talk about the specific characteristics of this paint, I want to tell you guys a bit about the brand as a whole. Core watercolors are made by the company Golden, which is better known for its acrylic paints, and this particular range of watercolors currently has a total of 83 different colors. I'm going to be using these paints out of tubes, as the formula of these particular paints makes it so that the colors are much more vibrant and much more saturated when used right out of tubes. I did want to show you though that even the reactivated paint has a very unique flow to it here, which is one of my favorite things about working with these paints. It's just such an enjoyable experience. You can see that as soon as I get the paint wet, that color just wants to spread and it wants to move. And it works the same way on the paper and it just, it almost makes it like a therapeutic experience just to use this paint because it just feels like it has so much life to it. And I know that extreme flow may not be ideal for everyone, especially if you really like to control your color and you wanna, you know, be in charge of exactly where that goes, but it worked really well for me. Core does sell specific sets of watercolors, so you can get an introductory set or a high chroma set or an earth tone set. You can get colors in specific sets, you don't have to buy individual tubes like I did, but I wanted to be more in control of the colors I got. And I also really like that Core's website has each color laid out in a swatch, so you can kind of get a better idea for the color as well as how the paint looks a little bit more as opposed to just a solid flat color that you might see on other websites so I really appreciated that a lot. So I ended up I believe picking out like 15 tubes of paint and it was a really fun experience for me to kind of cross-reference Core's website where their swatch system is so awesome and on Blick where I got these paints and just kind of go from there and pick out the colors that I wanted. Ultimately there was a little bit of that I didn't like with the colors I picked. But anyway, overall, I had a lot of fun picking out individual tubes. And on the tubes of these paints, you can see all of the information you would expect about the name of the color, as well as the pigments used, light fastness, and opacity. These swatches you're seeing are from fresh paint that was taken right out of the tubes and then swatched. One thing I noticed almost right away is that largely these paints are really staining also. And the reason that these paints flow so much is actually because of the binder that Core watercolors use. It has a specific name, it's like Aquarol. Is that it? Aquarol? It's basically like a synthetic ox gall. And real quick, this is really interesting. This very orange looking color is actually quinacridone gold. And of the quinacridone golds that I've seen, Core's variation is the most orange, which I found to be very, very interesting. The one thing I didn't like about the colors I chose was in this specific range of browns. I ended up wishing that I hadn't got the Naples yellow, which is the bottom color on the left, and I could have skipped it and just had the transparent yellow oxide and the raw sienna. I did know that the Naples yellow had white in it, but I was hopeful because I really like Sennelier's Naples yellow, which is a single pigment color and does not have white in it. But anyway, you can see right away as I started laying the first bits of paint, I believe this was neutral tint right into my wet paper. It just flowed and spread right away. And it ultimately just encouraged me to kind of loosen up and allow the paint to do what they wanted to do. And I had a really nice time working on it. I will be leaving links down in the description to each of the individual colors I got when I was picking out my tubes if you are interested, as well as links to the sets that you can get from this particular brand. Ultimately, with the colors I picked out, I ended up missing a cool yellow, and I knew I was doing that when I got them, but I didn't think I would miss it quite as much as I did. Mm, I don't know. I don't know how much I really miss it. I don't, I don't know. 
I like transparent yellow oxide, which is actually PY42, just the same pigment as yellow ochre, but this is a very transparent variation of that, and that yellow, even though it's an earth tone, works really well for me. I think if I was going to make any changes to the colors I selected, I might get like a warmer red and maybe a cool yellow. I don't know. Maybe. Either way, I had more fun picking out individual tubes than I did like just getting a set. It was a lot of fun. Core has also recently come out with a half pan set. So the formula does vary a little bit in that these paints reactivate more vibrantly with water as opposed to reactivating dry paint from tubes. That is one thing that I would say might deter some people from purchasing these watercolors is that the colors will not be as saturated and will not be as vibrant if you wanted to, say, buy tubes, put them in half pans, and let them dry first. I wouldn't really say that's the optimal way to use these paints. They're the best way to get true vibrancy from these colors is to use them right out of the tube, which is also why I got the large butcher tray that you're seeing off to the right there, so that I could just put little blobs of paint in and use them fresh. Of course, I don't always use every little blob, so I do end up reactivating things. Ultimately, it's just something to keep in mind and to consider when looking into these paints. As you guys probably know from most of my reviews, I have a hard time sticking to standard review things and end up wandering off in content and in topic that I'm talking about, so I do also want to talk to you guys a little bit about this particular piece I'm working on. This was a bit of a stretch for me as far as the concept, and I really struggled to make this one come together. I had the idea that I wanted to incorporate more anatomy and also this wolf's head, and I wanted them to be more... I wanted them to be connected more with each other than they were ultimately in the final piece, and also it took me a long time to get a sketch that I was happy with. I think I mentioned on Instagram that I had seven pages filled in my sketchbook of sketches that just failed when trying to pull this concept together. I was just having so much trouble getting anything together and it was just a big, big struggle for me. Ultimately, I do feel like I pushed the rainbow skin aspect of this piece a little too far and it kind of got to a point where I was trying to balance out my colors and ended up pushing the saturation too far and made some areas look a bit more muddy as opposed to earlier on when the piece had sort of a nice cool pastel sort of feel. I believe my reds got too warm and I did something I knew I shouldn't have done which was to introduce a new color to my palette which was that quinacridone gold. I mixed it in with my red and things just got too warm and it ultimately I'm not super happy with how this piece turned out but it was a step in the direction that I want to go in including more, I don't know, fuller illustrations with a wider variety of details and concepts and elements to them. So at least in that regard, it was a step in the right direction. These core watercolors aren't necessarily the cheapest paints out there. I would rank them similarly to price in, as far as individual tubes if you were gonna buy them to like M. Graham or a Sennelier things like that. I don't think that they're quite as expensive, at least in the United States, if you were going to get like Daniel Smith paints. They're probably a little bit cheaper than that. But if you guys are interested, you can check them out. And even if you wanted to just get individual tubes of like the primary, so like my magenta, yellow, cyan, or red, yellow, blue, something like that, I think these paints are well worth trying out my favorite thing about them is the actual painting experience. So just watching the paints flow, watching the colors activate, seeing how they spread on the page. It may be dangerous to say, but these are definitely currently one of my favorite brands of watercolors. They definitely replace the Kuratake Gansai Tambi in my top three, which sounds a little bit crazy, but I'm really, really in love with these watercolors. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. It was a lot of fun sharing it with you. If you have any other questions about these paints, please just let me know down in the comments and be happy to get back to you. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.